Okay. Let's start. Hear ye, hear ye! This is the ten o'clock news, and nothing is well. We find ourselves in a brutish empire, named for Brutus, who slayed great Caesar, then came to this isle to found a kingdom of his own. Later scholars claim this invention, but since the war, these quibblers have been silenced. Now our kingdom bows to Chinese overlords. Our princes are fed by their tutors on a diet of Eastern classics. If this box is your brain, I feel your pain. My Chinese boxing is weak. To me, all this is Greek. Somehow our story has got twisted. Our windscreen has got misted. An evil tyrant rules the land and makes the princes and princesses suffer terrible humiliations of the worst kind. He is not kind to his kind. He is not gentle whether his subject is Jew or Gentile. He doesn't discriminate twixt the two. He is not afraid to get familiar with family. You get the picture. The frame is broken. His kindness is token. Twin princesses are fled. A young prince is spoon-fed. A neighborly cousin of a king plays for time for his kin. A not-so-brutal prince Brutus, named for the land that is his namesake, fights the tyrant's forces. Strangely, all this seems foreshadowed in that book of Chinese wisdom of Confucius, the I Ching. This kingdom has lost much of its bling. Strange parallels are drawn between east and west. West is no longer the best, not since the war. To meddle with time is a crime, but we are not certain if we race forward or back. This broadcast is under attack. If you hear this, resist, resist, resist. How goest your kind attendance on that youngest of my kind? What is his state? He quoteth, my liege, much from that terrible new piece of playing by Squire Bill Shakespeare named Hamlet, though he does make a very merry madness with the manner of the speech. Methinks he is something akin to a child of secondary school vigour who is given something of a punishment essay and chooseth to write some great folly in mock of his grave professor. He is also given over entirely to the manner of speech that is found in the writings of our friends in the far west, that is to say, that of the mandarins of Confucius, sire. He is an absolute bedevilment to minister to with his lagactyl and lithium of grave majesty, as he has a great propensity to mock the great strength at arms of that learned race, and in his mockery does find great truth in his blows against the ministers of state who do mind to his mental state, and, sire, his mind being in a mental state, he plays so very merry with the offices of state that he pays no mind to the ministers who mind him. Is he then behind in his lessons of state? So very behind, sire, that one must needs be cruel to be kind. One must bind, by which I mean he must be bound, and like the very hound that chases the hind, he must be shown the scent of his reason by the very stain of his own blood. It is all to the good. What of his brother Brutus, the very name and fable of my able estate? Is he still much scaped? Is he scraped past the grasp of my rasp? For to grind his will to that which I mind is still the very will of my mill. To grind his bones to make my bread is my intent. If he does not repent, his recent treason gainst my reason. His blows against your men are the very lack. His blows against your men are the very truth of your lack of ruth, by which I mean he is in truth so very ruthless against those men at arms who stand against him, as to be the proof of the teeth that your blood gives to those of your line, which has its free use of kith or kine as suits its design. This is great finery, but what are mine two daughters, born at the same time? Sire, they are fled before they could be bled. Being of one blood, they braved the great flood twixt here and the kingdom of the Frank, where the king is very French. They did brave that great trench that has ever been called the channel, and feared not channel ground nor hunting hound till they were quite quit your majesty's bank. And what of the king of the western isle? Does he rest with us a while? 
Indeed, sire, and does not but smile. His very teeth are his crowns, for he seldom frowns, and is so fixed for a good resolution with your estate, that he does make more art than the Tate, sire. I'll take note. May my enemies learn my punishments by rote. King, how weary, stale, and unprofitable seem to me the uses of this word. My mind I must gird against these words that cut. How I must ever weed this garden of my mind, if my father fie on him I am not to grow after his kind. For a seed once planted, so grows. Can it go against its nature? I know not. But if a special feed can be got, then mayhaps, mayhap a seedling could grow stronger than the rotten oak. I choke that the king of the Western Isle rule not, but this tyrant be no more like that noble lord than I beat Prince Chi of Confucian fame. I, I could bear the name, but not the pain. His very fame is the token of my shame. His very reason was to mask reason with unreason, but I, my mind, falls like the leaf of the season. Tis not the work of man with his plan, but the attack of nature that is in retreat, a heart that is gripped with the chill of onward marching winter. But behold, here comes the saint of my scene, for I believe that Saint Nick, be he old or not, brings me toys for my bedevilment. Noble Prince, how goest your lessons in law? Are you past the bar? I am no more past the bar than a drunkard, for I am not so drunk in my reason that I mistake it for a pink elephant. My madness blows west to east, when the wind blows north, I know a whore from a hat stand. But you must have reason not to drink from the cup of the law, for it is his majesty's very legal desire to see you back with it. But it is by the very law of nature that I am struck low, not by the, for the blow of man. For it is by my brain chemistry that my mind is set racing. It is my madness that is braced by the very constitution of the British, British, British constitution. This is the only law I know, for it is said, not light but darkness. First he climbed up to very heaven, then he was plunged into the very depths of earth. I know not why you would speak such. Aye, my marbles have deserted me. Do you see to it that I get my just desserts? A mandarin would be very sweet, peeled by my own hand, and left to stand where I watched, as my hands are bound. I shall have to use the tip of my tongue and the teeth and the lips to consume the rascal. Bring me a seedless fruit, the very eunuch of nature, and leave him for me to desire. Sire, you shall have no supper set that which make decrees. Prithee, what shall that be? A double dose of pepper. Right, so that flat and we'll go for an action. Marry, my jaw doth ache like the proverbial ass that Samson did strike down his foes with. Perchance I will have a haircut, but this will be a close shave. Lead this tyrant on a merry dance till Brutus, his empire's namesake, can strike the death blow upon his father's rank ambition. For true, patricide and regicide both decide your place in hell. But is this beast not intent on infanticide? And by killing future kings, is it not future regicides he doth commit? Oh, fine, fine. I must leave my soul on a dance with the devil. It's the very dance of death. For when the music stops, do we not die? Hold, my liege! Well, then, brother. Sire, you are too kind. Are we not of a kind and both of one mind? Sire, uh, are we not? Brother, that is for you to say. Then, sire, you have said, by your noble generosity is the proof that we are of one blood. Come then, let us to chess. Methinks that before the game is through, I will make your queen afore I slay your king, for to slay the power is to kill the desire. Your reason is too strong for me, sire. 
Mayhap, by some happy chance, I may yet win the game. Mayhap. Ace's problems, basically. Um, and also, it just gives Ruth the opportunity to give her strongest performance in the actual dialogue. Um, and then I can pick and choose between the best. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to say action, run the camera, and say if you run through it twice. Uh -huh. Yeah? And then we can, we can probably say cut there. Unless you're not happy in some way with what you've done. In which case, we've got time, we've got some time for you to do for the a third or fourth, if you like. But I'm very happy with what you've done. So, you know, am I running this one as well? Yes, you're running that one for sound, yeah. Point it at Ruth to, to get, you know, the best sound you can get. Sort of thing. I'm ready when you are. Okay, the camera's rolling. So you're going to be reading from that position. Yep, I'm rolling, so whenever you're ready. Okay. Action. Oh, that I were of a manly state. I would bury my chef deep into his heart. The very rape of my rod would be the end of my cause and my claim to manhood. You have reason, sister. But peace, you have done much to trouble his reason. How so? The young prince spake oft to me of the manner in which the confusions of old would defeat their foes. Speak to me of it, to hear of times when my dear brother was happy will much settle my mind. By yielding to the main force, they kept afloat their great estate. But this is the very manner of woman. In truth, sister, you do speak. But give me a hearing. In the matter of love, who lasts longer? He or she? Why she? For she is like unto the ocean, while he, a mere fishing vessel, tossed on the wave. Then what difference between a humble fish boat and the very Titanic? Mighty he might be, but when sunk, sunk for all time, while the sea sits limpid. And the Confucians found this to be reason, not folly. Sister, did they not suffer the Khans who rode stallions like unto the Armada? but their nation did swallow them up. I know this to be true, but still I doubt. Persevere, sister. Think of your brother and his lowly state. Yet they crush him not, for he yields his very mind to them. Can we not yield our country if it means victory? You speak too bold, sister. Tush, I meant not to fool with words, but in there there is a truth. For if what the young prince says is in troth sense, then shall we not yield aught in our defence? But what of honour? And what honour have they? You speak strong words of weakness, but my fortitude doth tremble at them. Pieces. Tis not to be. I but paint a scene. Come, to the court of the Frank. I'm actually happy with that, Ruth, to be honest with you. I don't think we need to do a second take unless... To kill or not to kill, that is not the question. Nay, for me it is a question of how, not should. For this father of mine is so very rank in his corruption, let, let us not call it killing, but burial in unconsecrated ground. 
For in troth, he is already dead. He that has no compassion in his heart, but his own passion for the art of torture. It is not just the body he rack, but the mind. For in the name of reason, he does so stain the name of the same, that he does drive one to unreason on a point of honour. Old things rank and stale that do rot in the dark places of the heart have no comparison to those born of too much faith in misplaced calculus. My dear old tutor spake, he did not carry the one, Prince Brutus. Well, it is in, it is his employer who did not carry the one. That one being the young prince who has kept the truth among camp in the Hounslow Hills hidden in the wastes of his senselessness. Come now, Brutus, to battle.